Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we are discussing about wing planform geometry. So, now we are going to talk about is there a difference between lifting characteristic of a 3D object which is wing here and a 2D object which was aerofoil that we discussed earlier, right, which is the cross section of wing. Right. So, what we discussed about is the wing geometry. So, we talked about some of this non dimensional parameters So, we talked about aspect ratio and taper ratio as C T upon C R and then mean aerodynamic chord C bar which is M A C mean aerodynamic chord is equals to 2 third upon C R times 1 plus lambda plus lambda square upon 1 plus lambda. And then we also discussed about yeah, this location of this uh, mean aerodynamic chord, location of MAC, span wise location. Say so, this is the corresponding Y MAC. So, Y MAC is B upon 6 times 1 plus 2 lambda upon 1 plus lambda. Now, how, how do we proceed? No. First, let us look at the theoretical aspects here, how to figure out the lifting characteristics of wing, right. So, they are we are talking about aerodynamic characteristics of So, there are two theories that that talks about this uh, two main theories that talks about this lifting characteristics of uh, uh, of wings. The first one is lifting line theory and the second one is lifting surface theory. So, so, what lifting line theory talks about is high aspect ratio wings, right. So, it considers the span wise variation of lift, whereas it, neg it neg neglects the chord wise distribution of lift, right. So, the span wise distribution is considered in this lifting line theory, whereas the chord wise variation is neglected, right. In lifting line theory, So, span wise distribution is accounted, right. So, chord wise variation is not considered. and hence suitable for so, 
this theory is suitable for high aspect ratio wings. Okay. Whereas lifting surface theory it accounts for chord wise variation as well, but it is very complex in nature and right now we are not going to talk about that. Right. So, we are not we are uh, going to talk about this lifting line theory, it requires higher computational capabilities as well for this uh, lifting surface theory. So, let us consider this wing made out of styrofoam, you can see there is the cross section is aerofoil here, right. you have an aerofoil cross section and there is so, it is about 0.75 meters approximately right and moreover it is a rectangular wing here right. Now, what happens what will be the major difference here? So, how the lifting characteristics varies with from an aerofoil to that of a wing right. So, what is the difference here? Now, consider uh, so as we know there is a pressure distribution where if you consider a cross section right at a given location what you have is an aerofoil similar to the pressure distribution or aerofoil you will have pressure distribution on wing as well. So, there is low pressure and high pressure low pressure on the top surface high pressure on the bottom surface right. So, this abrupt ending you know, so wing is a finite uh, finite object here right 3 D object and of finite length that means, there is certain end here is not it. So, at this abrupt end, so the aerofoil still have the same characteristics right, there is a higher pressure distribution on the bottom surface and lower pressure distribution on the top surface. So, because of this pressure difference across this tip, the flow tries to curl around from high pressure area to low pressure area. So, that curling will form this tip vertexes right. So, now according to this lifting line theory, this wing is replaced say say this is the wing that we are talking about right. So, this according to this lifting line theory this wing is replaced by or the lifting characteristics of this wing is replaced by a vertex sheet right a horseshoe vertex right. Now, the part of this vertex sheet which is on on the surface of the wing is known as bound vertex this is called bound vertex. So, so this and it is followed in the downstream by a trailing vertex, two trailing vertices right. This is how the trailing vertex will be, the flow tries to rotate from about the tips from so from the region right from the regions of high pressure to low pressure right. So, you have trailing vertex here and then this vertex sheet is closed by means of a starting vertex right. So, we will see what is the starting vertex is. So, what these two are the trailing vertices trailing vertex and then what we have is a starting vertex. This is how uh, a horseshoe vertex is formed. So, so, this figure is about So, do you remember our discussion about the two stagnation points right that forms on the aerofoil? Do you remember that discussion? We have an aerofoil, so we discussed about this earlier. So, so you have two stagnation points S1, S2 on this aerofoil. So, the streamline itself, so the body itself is a one of this stagnation stream is forms a part of this stagnation streamline and then yeah. Let us say at time t is equals to 0. So, this is what is going to happen at time t 0 what happens? Le the airfoil started 
moving ahead impulsively right that means initially the fluid particles will try to flow around this isn't it it doesn't have any obstruction isn't it? am i correct or not so there is no flow earlier so there is no pressure distribution here isn't it so when as the time progress that will develop right at t is equals to 0 this will be able to smoothly pass over and then form these two stagnation points which we discussed right so this will curl according to the potential flow solution it will curl around this tip and then close this particular flow right isn't it now at time t greater than 0 we discussed about boundary layer and all right and uh, adverse pressure gradient because of which the flow tries to separate here and the the initial thing that has formed right the smooth flow that has formed so this curl will be swept away in the stream for example if you look at uh, time lapse picture picture of this so at t greater than 0 what happens is t greater than 0 right because the flow develops after a while after t uh, after the initial fluid particles move across the airfoil right so and then the pressure gradients develop so this initial vertex which was formed here so the starting vertex which was formed here was swept away in the flow right to the in the downstream of the flow so this particular uh, vertex is the starting vertex that was considered here okay so what is this doing this bound vertex so when we have an airfoil right so say this is my uh, location of this lifting line so what i have is upwash and also a downwash here so so this bound vertex will try to push the flow up which is ahead of this aerofoil right ahead of this vertex and then also push it will all it will also push down the flow which is behind this aerofoil isn't it so you have an upwash as well as down wash. So, this this is what this is due to bond vertex and this trailing vertex will try to push down in, incorporate down wash right it will try to induce down wash ahead as well as behind the flow right it will also induce it will induce everywhere including on the wing but the influence of this downwash is negligible in presence of this bond vertex right so it will try to induce say it will try to induce downwash so, so don't don't consider these arrows as the magnitude here, right? So this is just for understanding the concept about this downwash and upwash induced by this bound vertex and trailing vertex. Okay. So a cumulative effect of this this two bound vertex and the trailing vertex. will have this upwash and downwash effect. So, the second color code is for this trailing vertex in the cumulative effect, right.
Okay. Now, this is the cumulative effect by these two. So, what is the immediate consequence of this lifting line theory? So, at a given span wise location, it will try to disturb the flow, is not it? It will try to. So, it is inducing an upwash, which means it will make the flow to move upward, and there is a downwash behind in the downstream, is not it? So, that push the flow downward about this lifting line. Say, this is my lifting line, right. That means, the direction of the flow is altered at various span wise locations. Am I correct or not here? So, that is what we, we have to take away from this particular theory. So, if the direction of this flow is altered, which means the angle of attack at that particular span wise location will also alter, right. So, and we know the lift generated at this particular location will always act perpendicular to that free stream velocity or local velocity, not the actual free stream velocity, right. So, now the lift at a given span wise location will be perpendicular to the local velocity, local velocity vector, not the free stream velocity vector. So, to elaborate it more, we will consider this picture again. So, say this is this is an aerofoil of our interest as a span wise location, right. So, we are we have taken a span wise location across this wing. So, let that be the corresponding span wise location. So, We have wing here. So, if you take any of this span wise location here, right. So, what you have is aerofoil everywhere, is not it? So, this particular aerofoil is represented here. Now, let us say this is my free stream velocity v infinity, v infinity, and the corresponding angle of attack is alpha, right. So, there is a downwash, is not it? So, there is some downwash. So, may not be of this magnitude say. So, just to uh, make it scale more realistic, <coughs> realistic. So, let this represent the downwash w here, right. See, in general, yeah, w at the lifting line, right. So, because of which uh, the resultant velocity or the local velocity will be tilted down, right. So, this particular change in angle of attack is the induced angle of attack by the downwash here, right. So, how I can represent? I can represent it by the same arrow w and then this will be my resultant velocity v r, right, v r and this angle is alpha i and this particular angle is called alpha l is a local angle of attack, right. Okay. Let me write alpha i. So, this is alpha induced and this particular angle is alpha i. I fine. So, alpha alpha i is equals to alpha minus. So, sorry, this is local angle of attack, right? This is alpha l. So, this is minus alpha l is a local angle of attack. So, what is happening here? Say this is the actual lift direction of this entire wing, because we define lift is perpendicular to v infinity, right. It is a force co component of the force, resultant force which is acting perpendicular to free stream velocity is lift and along the free stream direction is drag, right. But now, so because of this local angle of attack, right, so, so the lift has to act perpendicular to this to this resultant velocity, right, or the local velocity here, which is v r here, right. 
So, this is the direction of this local lift here, is not it? So, it has a component along the direction of actual lift, overall lift as well as along the direction of overall drag. So, this additional drag due to this lift is known as induced drag, induced by the lift, right. So, you say so this particular angle is what? Alpha i, is not it? So, this is alpha i and this is alpha i. This is, these two are perpendicular and these two are perpendicular. So, the corresponding included angle here is alpha i, right. So, alpha i is equals to alpha minus alpha l. So, according to this lifting line theory, this induced angle of attack is equals to C L upon phi E A R, A R is the aspect ratio of the wing and E is the Oswald's efficiency factor. So, for an elliptic wing, E is equals to 1, that means it has minimum induced drag, right. And for rest of the wings, it will be less than 1. So, how the elliptic, how the lift distribution is deviating from the elliptic lift, lift distribution, that uh, this factor talks about that particular parameter, right. So, what is the drag that is induced because of the lift is equals to? So, you have lift here, you have a component here in the direction of drag, is not it sin alpha, right. So, C L times sin alpha i for small angles of attack, what we have is C L times alpha i, right. So, if I substitute alpha i here, what you get is C L square upon pi e a r. So, this is an important result, which we will be using later on when we discuss about drag, right. So, this is the induced drag because of this local variation in the, because of this upwash and downwash effect, right, is not it, that which varies the curse local velocity vector and hence the lift at that particular location. So, it has a component along the overall lift, uh, direction of the overall lift as well as overall drag, right. So, the corresponding component of this lift in the drag direction is the lift induced drag, right. So, which is equals to C L square upon pi E A R. So, this is what we intended to use this theory, right, for this, uh, we intended to use this theory for this particular derivation, right. So, Apart from this, we can also look at uh, how, yeah, how the lift coefficient is varying with respect to angle of attack for finite wings. So, what do you mean by finite wings? How it is characterized by definite length, isn't it? So, when there is definite length, there is aspect ratio, definite aspect ratio here. So, let us say CL, it's 3D, 3D CL is equals to. So, sorry, it is varying with angle of attack here. So, let us say this is for an airfoil, okay. So, this is for an airfoil, this is how C L is varying with angle of attack. So, let us assume alpha at which C L is equals to 0, right. Again, coming back to this concept, when there is no lift, that means the pressure distribution on the top and the pressure distribution on the bottom has to be same. So, when there is no pressure difference on the top and bottom, do you think there the flow will be curling around? It may not be able to curl around, right. There is no driving force to, uh, driving force for the flow to curl around the tips, right. That means, so at zero angle, uh, at zero lift condition, so the pressure distribution of the wing and a particular cross section should be same, is not it? So, that means, the angle of attack for wing at which C L is equals to 0 and for the aerofoil at which C L is equals to 0 can be same, is not it? Because there is no induced angle of attack there. Am I correct or not? Is it a decent assumption? Is not it a decent, a decent assumption here, right? So, for with the increasing in fi aspect ratio, right, what happens is there is a 
drop in this CL alpha. So the slope is decreasing, right? So more or less, this is this is more or less a decent assumption here, according to me, right? So right. So this is for aspect ratio is infinite, right? So this is for uh, aspect ratio one. Say this is aspect ratio two. And this is the increasing direction of aspect ratio. Fine. Now let us relate the lift produced by aerofoil and the lift produced by the wing made out of same aerofoil, right? So let us consider a particular lift coefficient value CL here, right? So this say this is my CL interest uh, of my interest, and then the same the lift by this aerofoil is produced at an angle of attack alpha here, right, okay. But whereas because of induced angle of attack what happens is let us assume it is produced by the wing at an angle of attack which is alpha plus delta alpha otherwise alpha i, right. So this particular difference in uh, aerofoil 2D section and the 3D section is because of this induced angle of attack alpha I here, am I correct or not? So let us assume this three dimensional slope here d capital C L upon d alpha, right. So, so B A is equals to let A is equals to d C L upon d alpha and A naught is equals to d C L two dimensional upon d alpha, right. So, where So, the same lift again is produced by at different angles of attack for aerofoil and wing respectively, right. Which means the C L here is equals to, so I know one point here which is alpha comma C L and I know the other point which is alpha plus alpha i comma C L, right. And I know the other point here, which is alpha at C L 0 comma 0. So, so this particular C L is equals to C L alpha times, right. What can I write? Alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0, is not it? Am I correct or not? So, what is this slope y 2 minus y 1 upon x 2 minus x 1? So, this small C L alpha is equals to what is y 2? C L minus 0 upon small yeah alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0. So, this is C L alpha 2 D small C L alpha here. Now, I am differentiating with with the wing and aerofoil right earlier I have not. So, this implies C L is equals to C L alpha times alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0, am I correct, right. Similarly, this must be equals to what C L alpha which is 3D for a, for a finite aspect ratio wing, let C L alpha be the lift curve slope here in the linear regime C L alpha times alpha plus alpha i minus alpha at which C L becomes 0. So, can we relate these two expressions? So, C L capital alpha is equals to C L 2 D, C L alpha 2 D multiplied by alpha minus, yeah, this is the total angle of attack because alpha C L 0 is negative. So, this is the total angle of attack to achieve that C L with a C L alpha as slope of this curve and then alpha minus plus alpha i. So, this implies C L alpha is equals to 3 D is equals to C L alpha 2 D upon 1 plus alpha i upon alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0. 
So, according to lifting line theory, what is alpha i? Yeah, this is C L, right? I can write as this C L upon pi e a r times alpha minus alpha i, right? So, so alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0, am I correct or not? So, what is this C L again? The C L with aerofoil, I will be able to generate by using this expression C L alpha times alpha minus alpha at which C L is equals to 0. So, substituting this in this equation, what I have is C L alpha 3 d is equals to C L alpha 2 d upon 1 plus C L alpha 2 d upon pi e a r. So, this is the relation between lift curve slopes of finite wing and infinite wing. Right. Thank you.